So good morning, everybody. 18th, 18th of May, 2023. And, uh, well, what kind of news there's going on? A lot of people are supposedly disappeared. Now they're around. Let's see if I can get a picture first of these funny ravens they have here. Huge birds. Well, I don't know the difference between a raven and a crow. So I think it's a, I think it's a raven. They're, they look bigger than the crows that I've ever known when, when I was growing up in the U.S. And I don't know. But since we're talking about birds, chickens, no, let's talk about uh, what's going on now. One of the things I want to talk about is, is there's this big scare now in the United States or actually in the world. It's the World Health Organization. And a lot of people are talking about the next pandemic. You know, they're not going to let us go from that. And um, you were thinking it might be another, another coronavirus, you know, because that's what they've been concentrating on a lot is, uh, is doing, another, doing another one of those. And uh, one of the questions is, is when? When were they going to, you know, Billy, Billy Gates is saying, oh, and there's going to be another one. You know, he's been saying that. At first he cooled down a little bit and he was saying, oh, we didn't know that the coronavirus was not so bad after all and, uh, and uh, that the vaccines didn't work very well. But uh, yeah, they're still trying to push it. Oh, a squirrel, one of the first squirrels I've seen here. Too small for you guys to see, sorry. Uh, other birds here. Oh, a lot of things going on here. I don't know, did I say it's the 18th? I think so, 18th of May. But uh, yeah, this is uh, you know a park nearby where I live. So look at sometimes you see some garbage. There's a bottle over here, a piece of paper there. But in the distance, there's a paper, of course, because there's a set of garbage is right over there. But uh, anyway, we're talking about flu, not garbage. Um, yeah, there. <laughs> Chelsea Clinton was even coming out and she's talking about getting everybody. She's talking about children like one year old, actually even below the age of one, getting vaccinated for coronavirus. And we thought this was all over, you know, and children really are practically not affected by this, but yet they still want to stick needles in them and, and all that. And by the way, you know, just a side note, a little bit related to that. I'm going again to Baranovici today to see my cat and my mother-in-law and my mother-in-law and anyway, my wife, they're going to be probably going to the Ural Mountains, uh, maybe around July, at least they plan on doing that um, because she's, my mother-in-law has been having some serious heart problems ever since she got this, uh, you know, thing spritz spritz in the arm like what they might say in Germany and um, but they're perfectly safe they're perfectly safe as you all know because they tell us that whatever they tell you is always the truth so same as uh, shooting down Kinzhal missiles with Patriot systems that are admitted that they can't shoot down Kinzhal missiles but yet that's been working so that's another story but uh, yeah, this avian uh, flu is supposedly maybe the next one that they're going to be coming out with. And uh, they're already testing vaccines in the United States, apparently. And they're announcing this on British television about, uh, you know, avian flu. And it's normally, of course, it's only going to be birds that are affected by that. And then this uh, also makes you think of when the Russians were, um, and early on they were, you know, uncovering some materials about about um, like Rosemont Seneca, things that were happening in Ukraine when at the beginning of the special military operation. And if you if you can remember that they found evidence that uh, Rosemont Seneca, you know, which is uh, where the Bidens are heavily invested in that company, and uh, Rosemont Seneca is. Uh, I guess it's still going. It's this investment group, I guess. I don't know. But anyway, they were one of the things they were involved in is avian flu, you know, and uh, 
Corona. <laughs> um, let me, uh, let me uh, researching vaccines to prevent the coronavirus. I mean, they were creating the virus to make a, you know, variations of it so that they can make vaccines to help humanity. As we all know, that's that's how that is. That's what they're all doing. That's why they've been working on it long before we ever even knew that there was such a thing as COVID-19, you know? <laughs> but you can go back to so many companies and at least a decade before that ever even came about because they were actually just trying to work out just in case that ever happened. And now just in case a bird sickness is now going to be transferred over to human beings too. You know, it's really amazing that they can project that this stuff is going to happen to humanity when there's virtually no chance of it ever happening. But they know about this long in advance, long in advance. And, and, uh, and now they're preparing ways to treat this to save us all. You all see that, you know, these are just great people. So I don't know, do I need to say more about this? You know, but there another thing is what they're saying is children. Children will be the main target. You know, uh, some of these conspiracy theorists will say that uh, the global, I don't know if you call it deep state, globalists, the establishment, that they were kind of disappointed that children were not as very badly affected from um, the coronavirus. But that's all conspiracy theories, as you know children were virtually not affected at all. Well, no, I can't say that because, you know, Chelsea Clinton is out there telling everybody to get their children, even below the age of one, to get them vaccinated. But I thought the vaccinations were kind of faded off, you know, how effective they were. And Billy Gates, you know, didn't he say, didn't he mention how effective these vaccines were? Admittedly, and now they're back again to the same thing. <laughs> Makes you sick, doesn't it? So anyway, that's enough said about that. But uh, another thing is like we're, we, in the last week or so, you know, a lot of people have been uh, kind of disappeared or disappearing. We all know, you know, Gonzalo Lira, they came and got him. And so we all know who got him and where he technically where he is at. Um, you know, I, I, I saw that I could write to him. It's, it said available, so I wrote to him, and, and it, I just got an answer that's, you know, like a, what do they call it, emocon that says, hey, that's all that it said. So either, either these things are generated automatically, but, you know, if it's like a phone, who's, uh, how could the phone be charged up? I, I don't know. See, I'm not much into a lot of this tech stuff. But I got a hey, and that's it. I was thinking, so you know, maybe that's a sign that he's he's uh, at least available. And then I, I wrote back again, and thinking maybe he is uh, allowed to have his phone, but not allowed to really make any kind of response any more than that. I, I'm not positive, or so. And um, Alex Christoforo was talking about about him and uh, about Alex Gonzalo Lira, and that the United States supposedly is going to be involved a little bit or maybe assisting because that's supposed to be what they're supposed to do. You know, the diplomatic embassies and say, you never know, you know, but the rules based order of today means there is really no rules. They play it as they go along. They make up rules as they go along They make up new ones when the old ones don't seem to be coming with the results that they want. <laughs> rules based order is, means there's no rules. You know, that's how that one goes. But then there's a couple other people uh, supposedly disappeared. They said Lukashenko, you know, when he you saw them at the at the May uh, 9th, I keep wanting to say 8th, the May 9th uh, parade in, uh, in Moscow, he didn't attend the one in Minsk, and he was kind of rushed back to Minsk. And uh, I guess the word was that he's just been working too hard lately because like a couple days ago, he looked fine and he was at a... Uh, uh, some sort of a meeting with some heads of military in a certain district, 
that uh, borders uh, Russia. You know, and that, that, uh, that part of Russia has been under a lot of attacks uh, from drones and terrorist attacks from Ukraine. Let me tell you, there's a lot more attacks and things going on that you, than you hear about. So anyway, this region was getting strongly hit with terrorist attacks. So, so he was there and, uh, you know, as the head of state, um, you know, the whole place, that area is on high alert. You know, they've, they've had some, you know, things happening within uh, Belarus, as you know, too, some small ones. And once was that airplane. And then there was a, before that, there was a, a military base. And uh, in the metros here in Minsk, you know, they're under a lot higher security. It's, they're, they're not really technically bothering us. I mean, I don't want to say bothering because it's, it's for our safety, but you know, they, these people are trained to, you know, look at people and they look at everybody that's going into the metro. And uh, sometimes they just randomly take people and then they search their, their bags, they send it. It's not that they look in the bags, not like St. Vincent and the Grenadines and they get real belligerent with you and get out and look at your bag and you know, things like that. But at least they're here, they're very, they're, they're a lot better, I tell you what. It's it's St. Vincent and the Grenadines would be very well served if they look at how um, the public security people act here in Belarus. They uh, are very polite. They never pester you. <laughs> you know, even the uh, when they uh, are approaching a known, I don't know, what do you call it, uh, mm, person that's uh, against government they also even act nice so they say please and uh, and knock on doors they don't barge into doors and then if you don't open the door and uh, you're a known <laughs> person that has weapons or something then they're gonna they're gonna you know kick your door in and of course that happened uh, I don't know maybe it was a year and a half ago and the guy had his gun raised and the first person that came through the door he sh they shot him in the chest and killed him a KGB mm. No. Yeah, that's another thing, you know, uh, they calling it KGB, uh, you know, like the old days in Russia, you know, some people say that's not a, that's not good, but maybe in some ways it is. It's if you want to keep some of the bad guys f afraid, but like I say, they're very polite here. Anyway, who disappeared? Who else disappeared? Um, so Lukashenko was fine. Gonzalo Lira is not really fine because he's, his freedom is taken away from him. But then what about um, uh, Sirsky, General Sirsky of Ukraine and General Zaluzny? And nobody has seen either of these people for like weeks. And I think it was uh, Wagner. Uh, Wagner said they got him, they got Zaluzny. And apparently they did because nobody has seen this guy, Zaluzhny. And Sirsky apparently as well because, uh, and I think the Ukraine is saying, oh, they're fine, all that. And then some people are saying, oh, maybe it was a, uh, um, some sort of a dispute between uh, Zelensky and Zaluzhny and that uh, he's just like uh, stepped away or something like that. But I tell you, there's some rumors and it comes from Ukrainians, from Ukrainians. They're saying that, uh, that Zaluzhny, yes, he was hit and he lost one leg and he's in a coma. So there is uh, some evidence pointing to that, as you know, some evidence. What it, you know, what, what is going to be the truth? Uh, who knows? It's just like what I was saying. Uh, Prigozhin was saying that he's turning over, um, you know, the siege of Bakhmut uh, to the Chechnyans, and uh, apparently he didn't okay that with the Russian military, and I guess he's still answerable to them, and uh, it didn't get turned over, so he's still there and still operating. But apparently they uh, they said they're going to give him all of the uh, ammunition he needs, which is apparently what's happened. So it's all all and well, and it looks like. Supposedly, I'm you know, but I've been hearing this for I uh, since, since since last summer that Bakhmut is about to fall. But anyway, they're just it's getting the uh, area held by 
Ukraine is just getting smaller and smaller. I don't know if the roads are all cut off. I don't know how much ammunition. You never know if there's underground tunnels there uh, to bring any kind of supplies or ammunition or anything. So we don't know. But like I said, it's a very small area now that's under control of Ukraine. So, so that might just happen very soon. And also, uh, Khmelnytsky, that area that was hit um, by, apparently it was four drones of Russia, and uh, they had that army depot. And I think when I reported it, I didn't have so much information at that time that just that there was a massive, massive explosion at that time. But all of you probably already know um, that it's believed that that's where they were holding the depleted uranium uh, ammunition for tanks and whatnot. But, you know, and that's probably true, but also, oh no, some police there, hope I'm not suspended. So I didn't know, didn't know they were looking at me driving by. You don't see so many police in Belarus really like you, you would think. And if they do come here, they'd be very nice, trust me. So anyway, um, it was believed that that was where they were storing a lot of the depleted uranium ammunition, but, 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 on the Russian channels, and I don't know if this has been mentioned yet on the independent media of uh, English-speaking channels yet, but it is believed that that's, that was a dirty bomb, that Russia hit that storage and there was a dirty bomb there because of the amount of radiation that has now been spewed out over West Ukraine and Poland and, you know, a small amount going to the Baltics as well as a small corner of... Um, of Belarus, but uh, you know, down by the breast area, which is not so great. But anyway, it's a smaller amount there. But Western Ukraine and and uh, a lot of the regions um, right across the border in Poland, I guess, are heavily hit with with radiation. And this is radioactive dust. This is if this was from uh, uh, from depleted uranium, it's mostly the dust, and it stays it stays radioactive for hundreds and hundreds of years, so it's many, many generations. And they say that the wheat crop, of course, is going to be terrible because it's going to be all radioactive. The soil is radioactive, and so there's a lot of wheat production in that area. And it's going to be even worse than uh, the low-quality wheat that was uh, sent to Europe um, this past year, which was, I think, rejected by most European states because of the poor quality of it, you know. I don't really know the answer because I've, I was thinking that they had very good grains in, uh, in Ukraine and um, why it was bad quality at that time. Um, I don't know. So that's, that's uh, all I have to say about that, a dirty bomb. But remember that was, uh, I think it was six months ago or maybe a little bit longer, I don't know, but they were talking about a dirty bomb, that Ukraine was gonna set off a dirty bomb. Russia had evidence that they were gonna set off a dirty bomb and blame it on Russia and say Russia's using nuclear bombs in order to get, uh, I don't know if you wanna call it NATO or the United States involved. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know, but apparently, I don't know, apparently that's where they had, they did have a dirty bomb and apparently that's where that was at because that would uh, explain that huge amount of radiation, uh, just having some ammunition from depleted uranium, that's just way too much, that's way too much uh, um, radioactive poisoning that, that was spewed out all over. Because it's, I guess it, the levels are quite a bit higher than they should have been. And um, you're gonna see in the coming years, there's gonna be a lot of people in those regions with uh, cancer. And it's eventually gonna be spreading a little bit more into other areas too. Uh, I don't know if it's going to come this direction. I think it's going to go more and more closer to Germany, but I don't know if it'll ever get that far, you know. But it, uh, I'll tell you what, eventually it will get to Germany. But who knows how depleted the toxicity is going to be. I have no idea because you hear about still the, these people in... Uh, in Iraq where the United States used depleted uranium and, and the UK. And uh, Russia even has depleted uranium but, uh, bombs or weapons, but they never use them because of the toxicity of it. But the evil Russians, but no, the good, the good guys, the good guys, the, the UK and the US, they use that stuff. And they don't even care if they want to get one person, they'll kill, they'll, they'll destroy the entire building. You know how the USA works. It's not more shock and awe, it's just, 
uh, kill them all and let God sort them out. That's, uh, that's what we were taught in the U.S. Army. <laughs> yeah. Yes, so anyway, I think that's about, about all the important things I wanted to talk about. You know, you always, there's always a lot of little subjects <laughs> to mention. And uh, I hadn't done a video here for the uh, past few days. You know, some things come up. And I'm still kind of in chaos, you know, where I'm living. This is actually the area kind of where I'm living too. Luckily, a lot of trees and where I'm at. And that's one of the good things. There's not any, you know, like big shopping, well, things really close by you, you know, but it's little shops, little shops around. So if that's what, if that's what turns you on, but at least there's a metro very close. That's, that's what's most important. You know, when you're shopping to find a place to live, um, well, I could mention one other thing. Apparently, the wage, the earnings in Belarus has gone up in the past year quite a bit. So people are actually earning more than they were before, which is, I guess, a good sign because that's one of the problems in Belarus was that the wages are kind of low. But, of course, we're having inflation as well. Um, right nearby here, there's a restaurant. Not, not a matter of fact, just a couple of minutes from here. And uh, when I first came here, like a little, like a year and a half ago, had a pizza. It was like, I don't know, in rubles, fourteen ninety nine, and now it's 23 So obviously there is some decent, or not decent, some high inflation here as well. Anyway, but for everybody out there, uh, hmm. you know, we're all watching what's going on in the world. You see some of these leaders like... Uh, Zelensky and uh, begging for more money and more weapons and apparently a lot of these countries I, I guess it was mentioned that uh, was Hungary the Baltic states Poland uh, because they're getting fed up with this refugee crisis of all these refugees coming of course there's a lot of refugees coming into Belarus and Russia as well from Ukraine but anyway they're getting fed up and they told uh, Zelensky they would want him to hurry up and end this thing and even Joseph, Joseph Burrell said the way to end it is to stop sending weapons, but that's nothing that they want to do. It's really strange. You get a lot of these people, they come up with some very good analysis, but their solutions are always terrible. I think I might have mentioned that in my last video. This is the problem. This is the problem. This is, that's the problem. The solution is more of it. Anyway, but uh, all of you, we got to hope that things are going to get better. This radiation, I don't like these permanent things that destroys people's health and well-being. Uh, don't want to talk a lot about that. But anyway, that's about all I c can mention right now. And um, I don't know if I'll be doing a video in the next days or so. I'll take this camera with me just in case. So uh, thanks for joining me. And um, subscribe, subscribe if you haven't already. I'll be talking more about this and I'll be showing you more of the sites in Minsk. You know, once, once I get settled in here. Still waiting for a lot of workers to do things. <laughs> Terrible. So, okay. Enough said. I'll see you the next time. Again, thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.